Hi everyone, my name is Mishkin Santa and I'm the International Tax Director here at the Wolf Group. Today we're going to talk about the U.S. Exit Tax Part 2. In Part 1 we talked about who was subject to the exit tax and then the three-part test of the exit tax. In Part 2 today we're going to talk about now that you know that you're subject to the exit tax, how do you calculate the exit tax and then some things to consider after going through the exit tax. So first off, if I'm subject to the U.S. exit tax, I'm going to be called a covered expatriate. Okay, and this means that on my final U.S. resident tax return, I'll have to file the Form 8854, and then I'll also have to do the exit tax calculation on my tax return. The first part of the exit tax is reported on your Schedule D Form 8949. And basically what happens is you have to pretend that you sold everything you owned on the day before you expatriated. It's a hypothetical worldwide deemed sale of everything that you own. And based off of that deemed sale, you'll be subject to capital gains taxes at either 15 or 20%. That's the mark to market tax in Internal Revenue Code 877 capital A. The second part of the exit tax deals with your deferred compensation assets. And in this, there are several ways that these things can be classified and taxed. So I'm not going to give any specifics on how this part of the tax works, but I'll tell you that if you have deferred compensation, such as U.S. retirement plans or foreign pension plans, you need to make sure to walk through that analysis with a qualified tax advisor so that you understand exactly what, what type of tax you're going to be subject to on these deferred compensation plans. Lastly, I want to make sure that people understand that there's a slew of things you have to do if you give up the, if you give up the citizenship or the green card after you've paid the exit tax or filed your final U.S. resident tax return. The first thing that you need to understand is that if you have any U.S. source income or U.S. source providers such as U.S. Social Security or U.S. investment accounts, you'll need to provide them with the form W-8BEN. They need to understand that you are now a non-resident alien for U.S. tax purposes. You will also need to make sure that if you do have any U.S. source income that is not being properly withheld, that you file current annual tax returns called Form 1040NR, so it's the non-resident alien tax return. Lastly, if you're a covered expatriate and you were to pass away and you have U.S. heirs, those heirs would then have to file a gift tax return and pay what we call an inheritance tax on that bequest. Um, and that's on IRS Form 708, and you'll find the, uh, the terminology for that in Internal Revenue Code 2801. So again, if you are subject to the U.S. exit tax, make sure that you understand the mark-to-market calculations, the deferred compensation calculations. Make sure that you have all of your withholding documents in place after you've given up the citizenship or green card for your U.S. source income. And if you have filing requirements for future years based off of U.S. source income, you file 1040 NR. And lastly, be prepared to make sure that your heirs are informed that they'll have to file Form 708 on any bequests that you give to them upon your passing.